Okay, welcome back everyone to final week of web fun. Thursday, the fourth day of week three, and we are gonna do a morning algorithm, then do a quick break and then follow that with our daily standups and then install Python together, which should be a fun session. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen. So here we are. We have two functions this morning. The first one is to write a function that takes in an array and a number of steps to shift the values to the right by. So um, that's not it. Then wrap around any values that shift off the array's end to the other side so that no data is lost. So if I give you an array, let's say the array is one, two, three, four, and then I give you, let's say the number one instead of the number two here, let's say I'll give you one. I want you to shift the values to the right by one. So one goes to the right, two goes to the right, three goes to the right. And then it wraps around the values that shift off the arrays end to the other side so that no data is lost. So that the one that was here, which was four, shifts to the right, then wraps around this one here, where one was. So it's a continuous cycle. If I give you two, imagine what that would look like. It would look like this one below. Three, four, one, two, because the right would have moved to the uh, one would have moved to the right two times, so now it's in the threes position, the original three uh, threes position. Two has gone to the right as well, and three and four continue on where one and two were. So imagine a loop that continuously wraps around, making a make a function that would give an output of an array given the rotation number. Okay, I will post this code as well on the Discord. And the bonus challenge is to allow shift by to be negative, be inserted a negative value and then shift to the left by that, by that many. Does anyone have any questions about this one? Okay, so then the next one is part two is once you finish that challenge, given an array and an index, remove the item at that index, return the removed item. If the index is out of range, return null shouldn't alter the array. So if we have this array A, B, C, D, E, and I say remove index, I want you to remove index one, okay? So you should return what is that index one, B. And the function, uh, now the array should look like this, A, C, D, E. So here's some other examples of what it should look like. Okay, this array, cake, pie, cookies, vegetables, candy. I say remove, uh, uh, Index four, I guess this should be four. Zero, zero, one, two, three. Uh, this, this four just relates to the number on the list it is. So remove index three vegetables. And now we, we get this value and our array now looks like this. Cake, pie, cookies, candy. Okay, these are pretty, uh, they're not so too difficult. Um, 
you can use inbuilt like push and pop, but no other inbuilt functions, JavaScript inbuilt functions. Okay, so if there's no questions, I'll go ahead and break us out into groups. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, recording and session. Welcome back, everyone. Let's have someone present for problem one, showing how to shift over certain parts in the array by how many. And if you have the bonus, even better. I know some of you did it, so let's not be shy and show our work. Oh, the camera's not on. Yeah. We got it using for loops, which I can show if we need to, but I really, really want to see how someone did it without nested for loops. OK. Let's show yours, Dan. I think we all use nested for loops. Did anyone not use a okay. nested for loop for this one? We didn't. Oh, OK. Well, let's see both. Dan, present first, and then Mike, if you would. All right, so OK. Dan, we have to see both ways. Fair enough. I'll allow it. <laughs> All right, let me uncomment this. All right, so to find our function, rotate array, take in the array and the number of values we want to shift by. Um, since we have both parts in, we first want to see which way we're shifting. Uh, so if it's greater than zero, we're going to shift to the right. If it's less than zero, we're going to shift to the left. So going through the right first, uh, we want to define what we want. Yeah, we want to establish how many times we're going to run through the loop. Uh, so we set our n equal to zero at first. And while it's left, then the then shift by mod array length. Uh, we want to keep running it. Uh, this was as Josh pointed out. So if the if the number of times we want to run through the loop is greater than the length of the loop, then we'll you know the position. If there's five things in the array and we want to run through the loop six times, then we're only moving the position one spot from what the original is. So we don't need, so we do it by the modulo instead of by the, the value. Uh, and then we're going to increment our n. Uh, so then for the actual shifting the values, first we set, uh, a temp variable uh, and set that equal to the last value in the array. Then starting on the right side, we're going to move everything over. Uh, so we set our i at array length minus one. So the final index. Uh, and while it's greater than zero, we're going to be decrementing i. Uh, so then it's just set array i to array i minus one, which is set it to the value that's at the left of that. Keep running through that uh, until you get to zero. Then uh, set array zero to the temp value that we stored up here, and then run through that loop this number of times. Uh, if we are shifting it to the left, then we're starting off by getting the absolute value of shift by. So shift by times negative one. Uh, do the same initial for loop that we had up here. Then uh, kind of the same way, uh, set the temp to 
the array value that we'd be bumping off the end. Uh, we're bumping it off the left side this time. So temp equals array zero. Uh, and still for i equals, well, this time we're going to say for i equals zero, i is less than the array length, and we're going to increment instead of decrement. So array i is equal to the value that's to the right of it. So i for array zero, we're going to set it to array one. For array one, we're going to set it to array two, et cetera. And when we get to the end of this, we're going to set uh, the rightmost value to the temp that we stored up here, which was the original leftmost value, uh, and then run through that. Okay. The number of times that we established. Awesome. And then from the array. So we on line 19, we find the absolute value by multiplying itself times negative one. That gives it that, that many positions from zero. And then you use that number, you modulo the array length. You're saying shift by divided by uh, the length. So shift by, let's say it's number, what's the number we gave? Negative three. Uh, three, negative three modulo five. So what's negative three modulo well, five? At this point, it's three modulo five. Oh, three modulo five. Three. Let's three yeah. mod uh, three modulo five is what number? Three. Three. Yeah. I don't have it backwards, do I? It's it still feels very early. It was working. I guess I just <laughs> don't. I just never thought of using modul the modulo symbol, modulo symbol on. Uh, you you know, with the smaller number on the left. So I never. Oh, well, that's what it is. I I would I would think like ten <laughs> modulo two, if that is equal to zero, then we know that's an even number, right? So like the number that it's being divided by would be on the right. So shift by modulo. Did you test that it works? Maybe I'm wrong. Did you try it with a negative number? I did, but I might not have tested it thoroughly enough. So okay. let's test it. Um, let's just test with this, since small. it's a five, five value array, should move it three times. So I should have five here. I should have five in the middle. Uh, I don't. Yeah, let's just move things over by one. Let's say negative yeah. one. Hang on. Um, so this. So I'm going to go back to my original statement. No, we did not get it to work apparently okay so the um, then which was a problem of testing did the positive one work positive worked okay so i think negative is so what do i have similar. up here negative is very similar you're almost there so let's uh yeah let's call it an almost win but just needs a little bit more work so cool all right thank you dan Let's go with Mike now. Let's present Mike and then All move right. on to the next question. I did just realize that uh, it will not work if the index is greater than the length of the array. So I need to work on that. Okay. But it will at least work if the shift is less than the length of the array for both positive and negative numbers. Okay. So we have our one loop where we want to go through the length of the array. And we're first going to be checking it and seeing if the length minus the shift by. So it currently it's going to be three. Length is uh, four. No, it's eight. So if, uh, eight minus three plus zero is five, less than the length, okay. So go through there and we're just making sure that that value does not exceed the length of the array. And we're just saying, okay, put the value at zero, whatever that is. 
Then once it gets to that point and gets beyond, uh, it's going to fail this if shift by is at all a positive number, because the only way that this will exceed the length and still be within the loop is if shift by is a negative number and becomes i plus shift by. So go down here, and the uh, the next index in the new array will be equal to wherever the array is of i, which would be like four at this point minus the shift by, uh, which would be basically starting at zero. So once we fin if we have this array here of eight indexes, and we say we shift it three to the right, we will do it, uh, it'll be this will be six, seven, eight. Now it realizes that it's been to the very end. So at that point, it starts over from the beginning, goes one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And it works uh, the inverse way for negative numbers right here. So if that's a negative number, that'll be greater than the length. Uh, otherwise, it'll just shift everything by and just say, hey, get whatever the length is, directly minus the shift by, minus i. It should be, uh, let's see, one, two, three, five, five, six, like right here, two, three, four, five, six, one, to move everything to the left. Okay, nice, nicely done. So now we just need to make it work on it working uh, well, it if the number of shift by is greater than the array length, right? Yeah, which I think you could just really just uh, do with a modulo and just like set a new variable. I think that might be the easiest way to do it. Okay. Nice. Um, all right. Uh, well, here here's here's something I'll I'll say. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you have the array. And for example, um, the you know, let's say the the array length is five. Mm -hmm. If you have a number that's divisible by five, you know that you don't even have to shift the number. So if I give you shift by five, all the array is going to be in the same place it was before. Yeah. If I give you ten, it's going to be in the same place it was before. Mm -hmm. So it, whatever number shift by. So if I give you a number, like if you're given an array length five and you're and I'm giving you shift by eleven, mm -hmm. that's uh one more than uh ten, which is what it would be divisible by. So you know based on its you know uh by what number it's divisible by one, two, three, four, five to to move it over by that length mm -hmm. for that okay. index that's five so yeah. um yeah use the modulo symbol and uh, dan says in the chat ours did work originally i just said that the values was going to end up at the wrong spot because i forgot moving left instead of right numerator goes on the left modulo denominator goes on the right okay so with that being said, let's go, uh, let's move to problem number two. Which group did problem number two? We did, unless you want uh, somebody else. Yeah, let's see yours, Mike. All right. All right, part two. Uh, I was a little concerned or uh, confused with telling it what to return, but I realized it just wants us to return either removed null and then just print the array because it's a constant outside the function. So what it does is it takes in the array that's defined up above and then the index. And removed, we can just say set it exactly to whatever the array is at that index. That's fine. And we don't need to worry about temp variables because we're not uh, shifting everything over. We're removing something or overwriting it. So that value really doesn't matter. So we start it at the index, we don't start at zero, uh, or sorry, start it here. And we just need to go through and basically as we would with an array, just going all the way to the end, but say, hey, we're starting index two. Okay, we don't need to worry about the first two. Those remain uh, as they are, they're whatever. Mm -hmm. And they just keep going through and basically just say, hey, it's equal to i equals array i plus one. Okay. And, and all you, you have to do array uh, minus one, so it doesn't exceed the length. And then at the very end, just pop the last value and uh, return it. Cool. Because mm -hmm. before you pop this value, it'll basically just be 
like this would read uh, A, C, D, E, E, and E would be in there twice. So we just have to pop the last value out. Mike, what what are those two vertical lines on 427? That is the or symbol. Like as uh like these would say and the two pipes, which is right above your enter key, is or. So it says if either of these are true, just one of them, then return null. Perfect. Thank you. And so if the index is greater than the length or less than zero, then it's not gonna be valid, it's gonna be null. Can you run it? Yeah. Um, yeah the last the four length minus here. one thing is throwing me off. Because the thing is, we want to go through it, and we want to say that uh, the value is equal to that place plus one. Well, we can't go up to this spot and say, hey, mm -hmm. this is equal to this spot plus one. There's nothing over there. But the last spot is not necessary, since we're just moving it to the left. So we say, hey, this D is in this spot. It's equal to E here. And we just stop. Because yeah. we get to this spot and say, hey, that it's equal to this. Sense. There's nothing over there. And it's already we've already grabbed okay. this value. It's now equal to the D spot. And we just got to remove the last one. Yeah, we ran it with length instead of length plus one. It didn't kick us an error. Mm. But I see how yours is cleaner. Was... Yeah. Thanks for explaining that. All right, no problem. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that explanation. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. So uh, good job with this one. Um, for the groups that I was working with that couldn't find the solution, this is it. So you can come back to this video, or take a screenshot. But always... Uh, Give thanks and credit to Mike here, the author, whoever the author is. And we'll go ahead and stop this recording.